Welcome to the final part of the stand-up paddleboard build with Jarvis Boards. So if you haven't watched the other episodes, I recommend you go back and check those out, or just go from here, who cares? But uh, the whole story's on there. If you look, there's a bunch of videos. Um, I've just got these very simple stand holding the board up on edge and checking the, the deck and the underside just making sure that this, the skins are gonna look nice when you glue the rails down. So the first rail I steamed on, and that worked well. Um, I could have used a big steam box that was 13 feet long, but I used just an iron and a wet towel and it was more than up to the task, though slow. So it was easy to glue down using the thick sew from Total Boat in the tube. I just laid perfect bead everywhere. I didn't have to spread it all around. and It was just very, very, very simple to put the glue on, which I loved. And uh, the steam took the bend very easily, so um, it just went right on pretty easily. However, I had a flaw that I didn't see in this piece of wood, a crack, that let go later and made it so I had to glue that rail back together. So I would recommend you just do the laminated rail, which is what I'm doing here. Um, three layers, two layers, whatever you think you can bend on there. Um, laminating was way easier than steam bending it. Then you wanna take these rails down to be flush with the bottom. Um, that's a 90 degree angle with the flat bottom. Um, you don't want to pre-roll them over, so you want to just be careful, take your time, um, get the wood out of the way in whatever way you choose. You could use a power plane, belt sander. I used hand tools, just I was feeling that way that day. And I maintained this nice 90 degree angle on the bottom so we can lay out our rails properly. little sand but nothing final flip it over and now here it's not a 90 degree angle it's whatever that angle of the deck camber is where it hits the rail so you want to just follow that and let that be your guide and just kind of extend the line of the top sheet out right through the edge so you don't want to roll that over either you want it to be nice and square but not 90 degrees just perfectly in plane with that cambered deck. Just like that. Then you can fair that down. And there I'm using a uh, Hutchins speed file longboard to um, kind of bring that surface all together into one cohesive shape. And you can lay out your rails, which I've done there. And I laid out the nose and tail block decided it was time to fit them because they're going to get shaped as well. Thixo, again, Thixo is my new favorite thing. Right out the tube, so easy, no, no, I don't know, no mess, no mixing, it's just so easy. And because it's very thick, you can just tape the piece on there. Um, as long as the fit is tight, you don't need any extra pressure, the tape was perfect. After that kicked off, I had to trim it all down. I probably could have made this block a little bit smaller, but the day I glued it on, I, I think I was just pressed for time, so I glued it on big. So I first brought that all in plain with the deck, and then I cut it, so I could kind of use all that extra wood to my advantage. Cut that off, you could use a jigsaw. I use a Japanese saw just because I was feeling that way. I like to use hand, hand tools when I can. Um, when it makes sense there, it just made sense. It's a great little belt sander. They don't make it anymore. Same thing with the tail block. Get rid of all the extra wood. Bring it all out in plane with what's there on the uh, rails and the deck. Sand it maybe to 80. Shape down the profile. That's the camber of 
the deck on the top and then shape the rails that we already laid out so you want long sweeps on this thing you want long shavings you want you don't want bumps you don't want all sorts of undulations and weirdnesses you want it to just be like a sweeping fair curve on the top because i have to remove so much material i used a draw knife because otherwise it would take all day and then you have to refine that draw knife cut with the spoke shave until you're getting long shavings again This was a very fun process. Maybe the most fun part of the whole build. Sand it down so it looks perfect. That's a flexible foam um, yellow sanding block from 3M. And there I am doing a diagonal pass fairing and a diagonal pass going the other way and then across and the long way and back and forth and back and forth until the whole thing's smooth and fair with no bumps or dips or any weirdnesses refine it with a orbital sander down to 120 150 180 whatever you want and now i'm digging out the fin box that hopefully is still in there that i taped off in the last episode and there it was found it again and that went right in no problem so that was good. A little refining of the edges. Mark out where the handle is. Sand it all up perfect. So after it's been fared, you know, I orbital sanded it. And then found the handle with a router. Sanded all that up, got it nice. And then there I'm using a non-orbital sander. Here I'm using the Dustrite sander from, uh, Dustrite dust collector rather, from Rockler. And that thing is just so sweet for catching all the dust from hand sanding and power carving and stuff like that. This is two to one penetrating epoxy. So this is a very thin epoxy that you put down on the wood before you do the glass so that way you don't get air bubbles. Um, what you don't want is to have the wood absorb so much epoxy when you're fiberglassing that you get a dry weave. You want to have a, you want the glass to be completely adhered to the wood. So if you do that first, sand it down, um, then you'll have a much better chance of having a good looking glass job. So this is just a light e-glass fiberglass. And again, uh, this is a total boat high performance epoxy. Awesome for all kinds of stuff, bonding, laminating, fiberglassing. Um, it doesn't have an amine blush, so um, you don't need to wash it or anything like that like some of the other brands. And the idea is to glue that glass down to the wood, not to a layer of glue that is floating above the wood. You want the fiberglass stuck down. So I use a trowel as often as I can. Um, I think the trowel gives you better connection with the wood and less extra epoxy, which just equals weight. So I'll put it on with a brush and then squeegee it off with the trowel. Um, I'll put it on with the trowel, I'll put it on with a roller, but a lot of the time I'll just end up squeegeeing it off like this. So I have a pretty dry weave at the end, but I know that it's bonded down and the glass is saturated. And then before that that's fully hardened, like a few hours later, I come back and I hot coat a second coat on of the same high performance epoxy. This time I roll it on and then I tip it out with a roller brush like here. So I knock out all the bubbles that the roller creates. And that now is a beautiful base for varnish. Um, you can't see the weave anywhere and it doesn't have any extra epoxy that it didn't need. And that's prepped for varnish. Now we gotta sand it and everything, but that's how it goes. This is the roller brush. Super simple, you just cut a roller into thirds and it works perfectly for this. If you get the yellow epoxy rollers from Total Boat, I recommend those. And that's just the epoxy, no finish. 
So bottom looked great. I masked off the bottom with some blue tape and threw the top on. Now the top has a lot more shape to it, so you gotta make sure you don't have like pleats and weirdnesses in the glass. You don't want it to be bent. You want the like a straight line going from one end to the other. Um, yeah. So the high performance with the slow hardener, you have like ages to do this. Your shop isn't too hot, so take your time and uh, just wet that glass out, wet the fiberglass out so you see that it's totally transparent and then move on. And then come back after that and squeegee it off. But the idea is to just keep moving. You don't want the epoxy to start to set up um, or gel. This has to be done while it's wet. And the hard part is always the edges. Where it wraps around the rails, um, the glass is going to want to lift off. You're going to have to keep track of that. Keep coming back to it and pressing it back down until the glue, um, until the epoxy is, you know, starting to set up a little bit. So the idea is to put it on kind of heavy, wet the fiberglass out, and then squeegee all of it off. And again, those rails, gravity is fighting you, so you wanna think about those rails and don't just like throw, throw the glue on there and run away. That's how dry the weave is or open the weave is. You don't wanna have lots of extra epoxy on there after this first coat. You come back with your second coat, the flood coat, and tip it off, and that's after the second coat. This way you can't see the glass. If you peel your tape while it's still green, you'll be a happy person. If you wait or forget until the next day, you'll be a sad person. So that looked pretty good. Now I wanted to add tie downs and a leash loop. And this was a design from Jarvis. I took their drawing and I took a picture of it with my shaper trace here and imported that into the shaper origin and was able to CNC cut these little tiny little doodads out very easily, um, quickly and cleanly. Um, doing those by hand would have been somewhat of a challenge and um, I probably would have damaged more than a few making them with other tools, but the little CNC router just does the trick. I have a whole video about how I did this. So that's it. You glue it down with just high performance epoxy. That's the leash loop right forward of that was a little dot for the vent. And then I placed the loops for the um, bungee tie downs on the front, on the bow. And I glued those down and blue taped them down. So there they are there. Now this you need a sander is something else. It has a soft pad so you can go around curves like I'm doing there. And it is a real game changer. I wish I had always had it. So here I'm making reinforcements for the tie downs and for the leash loop. Um, it's gonna be a strap of fiberglass that goes over the top and keeps that from breaking. Um, should be strong enough, we'll see. So in order to get a clean line, if you just pull one of the strands of fiberglass out, it'll automatically make you a straight line. And then you won't have little pieces of fiberglass um, in your layup, you know, strands all over the place. You don't want a diagonal cut, you want a straight cut. Once the first one is out, any other threads you want to pull are easy. So you can make a margin around a piece of clean fiberglass that doesn't have little bits of fiberglass falling off everywhere. I love those electric scissors from Total Boat. They're awesome. They make this whole situation very easy. So now I'm making the, uh, the actual individual reinforcement straps. And see the little strand there? That'll mess up your layup. You don't want that. Now I have a nice margin of clean glass around what I actually wanted. High performance epoxy again. Wet it out. And these, after they were completely wetted out, you can barely tell that they're there. Um, 
you know you can see them in the in the layup if you look but they went almost totally clear so again you do your first coat very dry uh, making sure that the glass is actually wetted out and then you come back and do a, another flood coat over it um, yeah this is the sander it's a three by four Ica sand from Unita. They sent it to me um, because they saw me struggling with my board and thought, why don't you have a surfboard sander? And I agreed. <laughs> it's super smooth. It has a paddle to turn it on and off. Um, variable speed. It's really, really, really cool. And because it's not orbiting, it's an orbital, but because it's not rotating, um, it won't cut things when you get up next to them. Um, it's a very gentle kind of sander. And of course they make these awesome soft pads that allow it to wrap right around curves like the rails and just basically make this whole situation easy. Um, instead of hand sanding and trying to hold a vacuum hose, you just use the sander, it's so great. So I tacked it all off with um, denatured alcohol first and then I used a tack cloth to get all the extra dust off and then we got Total Boat Gleam 2.0 varnish out. This stuff is really good. Um, you can put multiple coats on in a day. So you put a coat on, you wait a couple hours, you put another coat on, wait a couple hours, put another coat on, leave it, come back maybe two days later, sand it completely until it's completely flat, and then put another two coats on and you're done. It flows out like spectacularly. It's like the, my favorite varnish now to work with. It really is. And that's first coat. So, first coat with a brush. Not too shabby. That's probably second coat. Flipped it over before sanding the, uh, the first coat on the bottom. And then did the top and then flipped it to the bottom, flipped it. So you get an extra day of cure time in between. Um, yeah, roll it on, tip it off. There I'm using a badger brush that I got from Total Boat as well. And, um, it's a purdy maybe? No, I don't know. It's great though. Love a badger brush. Inlay looked good. This just needs like one more sand and coat. So this is like the first day. It's this the second pass at this varnish. Sand it all till it looks like sea glass. Then roll and tip. And you got a pretty good coat. It's all in the prep. So that's all it takes is just nice prep, dust-free environment, good sandpaper. This is uh, Econet from Unita. That's a little chisel I made to clean out the fin box. And yeah, I mean, it's a pretty nice finish for a brush, not a spray gun. So that looks pretty good. I think we're gonna leave it there. But we need a paddle. So we'll start with the shaft, um, measure it up to the kink. I got these plans from Jarvis, put a center line all the way around the part, and then I figured out the taper of the shaft, cut the taper on my bandsaw, because it kind of tapers down. This goes right through the blade. Then I put a kerf up the middle of this tapered end to the point where it'll kink for the, the paddle board has a kink on the, on the shaft of the paddle. Steam bent that end on a very simple plywood jig I made. These Bessie clamps are awesome by the way. These trigger clamps are super powerful. One of them has a swivel. Um, they're just all great clamps, really well made stuff. Just makes things so easy. And that's steam bent beautifully. Total boat high performance. This time with a white pigment, Mixol pigment, and a bit of silica in it to fill any gaps in my curved cut. So I made kind of a thick white glue and stuffed it down that gap get all the gap filling goodness from the epoxy. Nice thick glue. 
back on the same jig, but this time with a little bit of tape on it so I didn't glue my shaft to the jig. Same thing with the blade. The blade's got the same thickened epoxy. It's book matched. Scrape off all the epoxy too. This stuff is bulletproof when you're um, going to get it later if it's hard like the next day. It's going to be very hard on your tools. So get rid of all the extra that tapers back down to the shaft, like line it up to that shaft and refined it with the belt sander. And then once I was happy with both sides, it's time to cut out the profile. This is a little interesting with the kink in the, sh in the uh, paddle shaft. You can kind of see that where it wants to rock as you're cutting. You gotta be kind of careful. At this point I realized the uh, bandsaw table was moving. And though I saw it moving, I still didn't stop cutting for some reason. but it came out pretty well. So it's just square, um, everything's square, square right now, but kind of at the right shape, the right thickness. You wanna get your center lines back on this handle because this handle's kind of a project. So go to the outside shape of the profile with the, um, right here I'm using a saber tooth burr, grinding burr in my die grinder. Um, you could use a spoke shave or you know whatever you want, a rasp. Um, that machine works pretty well for me. Big belt sander. Just bringing that handle down to the right thickness. Giving it a bit of a shape. And then doing the main carving with this. Um, these burrs are really, really good. Um, they barely burn. They cut super fast and they make it just easy to sculpt, basically. Like I could have done this well with hand tools, but I actually had a really fun time doing it with this tool. And then flipped it and getting the uh, profile of the blade down. So bringing it down to thickness on the edges. In the middle, it stays thick where the spine of it is. And then the edges get shaped down to basically nothing. So I found the shape with the spoke shave and then finished it with the belt sander. Spoke shave down to the line and then refined it with the belt sander. And I have that dust right collector underneath right now and it is sucking up all of the extra dust that's coming out of all of these tools. I mean, not all of it obviously, but all the fine stuff. And the belt sander can be a pretty fine woodworking tool. Even a big, big one like this. See, I have the belt kicked way over one side on purpose. And then back to this Ica sand with a somewhat soft pad on it, it can do all these really cool curves and stuff like way easier than your hands can. And these are the final shavings we're making on this project. So as I kind of reflect on this, this was a very fun project. If you're thinking about building a stand-up paddleboard, you probably should. Um, get your plans from Jarvis, watch my videos, watch their videos, um, and just build one. It's super, super fun process. It's a great start in wooden boat building or a continuation of wooden boat building. Um, and thanks for watching. Um, 
think about subscribing. It helps.